basically just learn about the different types of vectors and uh, their attributes and how they relate to each other. So, whoops, sorry, I just clicked twice. Um, so there are basically two types, uh, atomic vectors and list vectors. So atomic vectors, uh, all the elements have to be the same type. So they either have to be all integers or all doubles, all character strings, et cetera. Uh, list elements uh, can have different types. So you can have numbers and characters and, and logicals all in one uh, vector if it's a list. Uh, and then another type closely related is null elements, which are usually often like zero. Um, that's, but it's not technically a vector. Um, so atomic vectors are the ones where they're all the same type. And of those, there are four main types. There's the logicals, which are true, false, integers, which are discrete uh, numbers with no decimals, doubles, which are continuous, which can have decimals to any number of decimal places, and character uh, vectors, which are strings. Um, so first kind we will look at are vectors of length one, actually, I think. Yeah, so we've got um, vectors of length one. So we have logicals, like I said, true, false. They can be created using the full word in caps or just a T and an F. Um, if anybody, like, I wasn't sure if it would be easier if I actually run the code over here or if we just look at it here. So if anybody wants me to run any of this code, uh, just let me know if you find it easier to go through this and run things, or if you'd rather just kind of read through it. Um, oh, good. Do you want me to switch back and forth? And Yeah, wh whatever you like. It's, uh, okay. it's absolutely in, uh, as you like. Maybe, maybe, maybe a bit forward when we do something. So in this case, like, yeah, the these are already see. Yeah, simple. So. It's a little more complicated. Yeah. Okay. So, um, logicals, true, false, doubles are the um, integers. So, if even if I'm sorry, doubles are the um, decimals, right? Uh, numbers that have decimals. Even if you use an integer uh, to and assign it to a variable, it's still a double unless you put an L after it. So, in order to um, specify an integer when you create the uh, vector, you need to put an L after the number, right? So this one, just a one, is actually a double, and this one would be an integer. And actually, let's see, let's run those. Um, and just see, right? Oh, it looks the same. So you can't really tell. I was curious if it would look any different when you print it, if it would be a 1.0. It doesn't, doesn't look any different, but I think, well, yeah, if you did this, right, you see that one's a double. And the only difference is that you didn't put the L after it when you assigned it to the variable, right? So if you did the other one, whoops. Right, you see that one's an integer. Um, then strings, you can do either with single or double quotes. You just put the characters inside the quotes and you, have, you can use Unicode. I don't honestly even know what this was that was in the, it was already in the notes, so I left it, but whatever a sweaty smile is. Um, so. Uh, um, 
All right, so those were all just of length one, right? In order cr to create longer vectors, um, you just enclose them in the C function for which stands for uh, combine. Um, so let's see. On that. So then you'll see if you print to any of these, let's say this one, you have, you know, the three, three numbers in that one, right? Rather than just a single value. Um, you can also combine uh, vectors together. You, using the C function. So you can combine two things and then combine two other things and then combine all four together by enclosing them both in the same function. Um, what else? So yeah, R Lang, this was all, this wasn't really in the book so much, but it was in the notes already. So, um, I guess there's some slight differences. I wasn't going to get into that too much unless somebody wants to. We can, um, you know, play around with that a little bit more. Um, and then again, to determine the type and the length, um, you just use either the type of for the type or the length to get the the uh, the length. So here you can see all our variables that we created above and the various lengths, right? Um, missing values. All right. So um, contagion. For most computations, an operation over values that includes a missing value yields a missing value unless you're careful. So basically what that means is if you have something like this, a vector that has an NA in it, and you try to sum it, the resulting value will be NA because there's an NA in the vector. So in order to make sure that that doesn't happen, if you just want to sum the one, two, and three and get an output of six, you need to include this NA dot RM equals true when you sum it. And almost all the mathematical functions have that. So if you're doing a mean, a median, like whatever, all the different um, uh, functions, you need to put in this na dot rm equals true. Um, so get to here. Um, so in order to look for missing values that there that's um, similar to above, you can't just put in a normal like x equal double equal sign na because um, it'll it'll come back with na for everything, even though only two of them are actually na in that vector, right? So in order to check for nas within a vector, you need to use this is is dot na function. And then you'll get the response that you're expecting, right? The first one is NA, second one is not, third is NA, fourth one is not in this, right? Um, there are different NA types for each type is, of. Is it just for... So yeah. Is this just for vectors? So I cannot use the equal sign. Uh, now, to it, identify what's inside the vector to vector. In my experience, what if I say e this e never works? Hmm? You always have to use this. From okay, from, well, so I've never I seen. Huh? <clears throat> what if I do x equals equals five? Is that no, that, that doesn't work. That That's doesn't a good work. question. So let's try it, right? So let's just, I can't even remember if I ran everything. So let's just rerun everything, run that. So now if we try X, oh, what happened? Where am I typing? Oh, thought I had clicked 
Oh my God. Hold on. Sorry. All right. So we want to. So if we do that now, so that sort of works. Okay. Right. So that will. Yeah. Not not too. But not for okay. not to check for NA. So you can do it for a number. You can do this, but not for NA. For NA, you have to use the is dot NA. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, so again, this like thing that they, there's technically four different types of NA depending on the type of vector it's in, but, um, it mostly doesn't matter basically. Um, so in order to test what type of uh, vector you have, you can use these is dot logical is dot integer is dot double is dot character, right? Um, so. Did we, did we have examples for that? Let's see. Where are we? Oh, I guess we didn't but put in. What is atomic? Atomic is a vector. No. What, yeah, what atomic is... means they're all the same type, right? So everything within the vector is the same data type. So you can't mix characters and integers in an atomic vector. Okay. Right? That's really all that atomic means. Um, so let's say, let's just do one of these as an example. So we have our X, which I guess should be probably a double, right? So if we do is dot double on X, right? It's true. If we do is dot character, let's say on X, it's false because this is our this is our x All right so that's how you can test what type you have um what's next um there's also again our lang um i'll test it what happened i think i'm missing something here hold on so sorry, where are we? Oh yeah, sorry, I got confused. All right, so so these four are good, right? The logical integer double and character you can check using the is dot uh, functions. But for vector, atomic, or numeric, for some reason, you cannot, don't use these. They do not act the way you would expect them to. And it just says to look it up in the documentation if you under want to understand why. So I didn't do that. But if you want, we can <laughs> look them up. But for some reason, you just have to remember that these don't work the way you would expect them to. So don't use those to test what type of vector you have. Um, and then they suggest instead you can use rlang. So there's an is underscore vector in rlang and then is underscore atomic, not with the dot, right? Um, so that's just some examples using that. Um, co coercion. So um, coercion, it basically means like converting from one type to another type. Uh, so there's two different ways that that can happen automatically or explicitly. So if you do something like this, where you have technically this is a character and this is a logical, but you try to put them together, it will coerce it to both of them being characters. Right. So and it's sort of it's in this order and it's sort of honestly, this was a little confusing to me. I don't know about you, but it's kind of feels like it's backwards. So if you have a logical and a character together, it coerces to character. So it goes kind of in this direction, not really in that direction, if that makes any sense. Um, 
So what else? And then by mathematical operations, right? So if you, um, yeah, so if you have a logical vector, even though they're true false, true false get interpreted as numeric when you try to sum them or um, do any other mathematical operations on them. It treats them as numbers where true is one, false is zero. So if you sum this logical vector, you get three because you have three trues, right? Um, then explicit coercion, you can do using as dot functions. So there's as dot logical, integer, double, and character. So again, you could take like a, um, a double vector that has decimals. And if you do as dot integer on it, it will basically just drop the decimal places. Um, so it's important to remember, I guess that drops the decimal, it doesn't round. Right, so um, if you're expecting it to round, you would use a different function for that. Um, what else? So again here, like if you have a logical variable and you wrap it in as character, it'll turn those into strings rather than logicals. Uh, Okay, so two, one or two way, one of two ways that coercion can fail is either with a warning or with NAs, right? So in this example, it gives you a warning that the NAs are in, introduced by coercion. Um, and there where you had the character string in there because you're trying to convert it to an integer, it doesn't know what to do, it makes it NA. Next, attributes. So attributes are name value pairs that attach metadata to an object, right? So metadata is data about the data, not the data itself. Um, and, and, okay, and name value pairs. So uh, yeah, so an attribute is a name value pair that, that um, describes your data, basically. Um, so three functions to retrieve and modify single attributes. You can use the ATTR function, retrieve uh, all of the attributes. You can use this attributes function. And to set all of the attributes all at one time, you can use this structure function. So some examples, we have a uh, numeric vector A, we use the ATTR function to um, set our attribute. We can give it any name we want to. Here we just said attribute name and we set it as that to equal some attribute, right? Um, so that's how we set it using the assignment here, right? And then in order to retrieve that, to see the attribute, you can use the same function and just put the name in there and it'll return the attribute that you just set. Um, and then again, to do multiple attributes at once, you use structure. And then you just put all the name, you know, name value pairs. So the name of the attribute, the value you want to assign to it within the structure uh, function. And then again, you use this attributes to retrieve those and, and view them, right? So structure to set them and attributes to, to then retrieve them and see what the attributes are. Uh, let's see. So three particularly important attributes are names, dimension, and class. Uh, the names just are a character vector giving each element uh, in your vector a name. 
and then the dimension turns a vector into either matrix or array and class uh, in the book it says powers the S3 object system which we will learn about more in chapter 13. Um, so names and dimensions are the only ones, only two um, attributes that are routinely preserved um, after operations. So I'm going to be honest, I struggled a little bit understanding what this meant exactly. Um, so let's just look at the examples. So um, four ways to name. So when you're creating it, you can you do name value pairs within the C function uh, to create your uh, named vector. And so then when you print that vector, you see the names on top and the values underneath. Um, you can create your vector and then assign the names after using the names function and then assigning a vector with the same number of uh, character strings in it that matches the number of uh, elements in your vector. Um, you can do it in line with set names. So basically you create your vector uh, one through three and then set the names in one function. And then the fourth way is with our lang uh, set names function. And they all they all do pretty much the same thing. It's not a big difference, to be honest with you. Um, and then you can remove the names using the unname function, or by using the names function and then assigning it null, uh, and that will blank out all the names. Uh, this I didn't I didn't really look into this, so I don't know what that means exactly. Um, dimension. So dimension is the second important type of attribute. And dimensions, again, um, turns a vector into a matrix or an array, so which are basically two-dimensional uh, rather than, you know, you can think of a vector as a one-dimensional structure and matri matrices and arrays are two-dimensional, right? So you can take your vector one through six and then tell it how many rows and how many columns to create your matrix like this, which looks like that, right? Uh, one vector argument to describe all dimensions. Oh yeah, so this one, uh, it was interesting because you can actually just put in um, a vector to describe all the dimensions. So you have rows first, columns next, or actually tell you the truth, I should have changed this example. Let's do it right now because I'm not really sure about the order there. So hold on, let's go to our code. And let's run everything above. And then let's run this. All right. So basically, there's there in this example, there's three dimensions. So there's like, I guess, the number of arrays and the rows and the columns. And because these are both two, I'm not really sure which one comes first. So let's say, um, let's make this double it to one through 24 and then make that a four and see if this still works. I hope you guys are following what I'm doing here, but let's see. So yeah, so that works. So the first number is the number of rows. The second number is the number of columns. And then the third number is the number of arrays that you're creating, right? So let's put a note to that effect, right? Rows, columns, number of arrays, right? 
Um, and then you can also um, add the dimensions after using the dim function. So you can create your array and then um, just set the dimensions this way. And now I'm very curious to see if that also would work if you had three values. So let's just try it. All right, let's do this again. Let's say 24. Um, three, three. See if this works. Yep. So you can do it the same way, right? You can have your um set three set your um dimensions using three numbers for rows, columns, and number of arrays. Right. Um, and then there are a bunch of functions for working with vectors, matrices, matrices and arrays. So depending on what structure you have, uh, these do similar things. So for a vector, you use the names function. For a matrix, it would be either row names or column names. And for an array, it would be dim names, right? Same vector, it's a length, matrix, matrices are n row or n call, and array, it's dim, um, et cetera. So you can just refer to that if you need to know what to do for different types of structures. Uh, all right, so class. So again, class is how you turn um, the, the regular, uh, more common four types of vectors into these S3 atomic vectors, right? Um, and they behave a little differently than the generic uh, most common four types and store additional information and other attributes about the data, right? Um, so the most important four S3 vectors used in base R are factors, dates, date times, and durations. So we will look at each of those. Um, a factor is a vector used to store categorical data that can contain only predefined values. So I think everybody knows categorical data, right? So things like colors or, um, uh, you know, anything where there's a, a defined, predefined list of possible values. Um, so it has a class of factor and we add the attribute of levels, uh, which is the set of allowed values, right? So you can see in order to create a factor, you use the factor function, um, your um, data is this X equals colors. So we have red, blue, green, red, red, green, right? So this is not the levels, this is your actual data. And then we set the val values, which is a list of the unique uh, possible values that can go into the factor. And then if you table uh, uh, colors, the original just regular vector, um, versus table a factor. This is one of the main kind of benefits of having a factor instead of just a regular ve uh, character vector is that the missing values, right? If yellow is a possible value, but you didn't actually have any yellows in your data, yellow gets dropped from the vector when you put it into a table. But if you use a factor and then you put it in a table, you'll still see the possible value of yellow and just that you do not have any in your data set, right? Um, again, you can use type of to see what um, data type it is and it'll say integer because technically behind the scenes, that's um, it's using integer values to represent the different um, you know, possible values. Uh, but if you use the class function, then you'll see that it's a, a factor, right? Because basically the way a factor is formed is that it takes a regular integer vector and 
by adding the class attributes, because we're talking about attributes right now, right? By adding the class attribute, that's how you turn it into a factor. I have a question about this. Yeah. Um, so if you if you do is dot integer on that. Uh-huh. On uh on our factor on this. Mm -hmm. Okay. You get false even when type of is integer. Oh, I didn't run that yet. Hold on, sorry. Where are we? So let's try that again. So you get false. Even though type uh, of is integer, do you know? Like, I don't yes. think I've actually think... for that. Am I remembering right? No, this was one of the ones that, sh right, that you can use is dot integer, right? This was not one of the ones that they said. Don't yeah, you can't use, you're not supposed to use is dot numeric and is dot vector. Those are. Right. But is dot, dot integer, right, should work. But yeah, but so interesting. Uh, yeah, so I guess, I guess because of the class, it, I guess this looks at the class. You know what I mean? Because is there is there an is okay dot type? actually you know? yeah type of is all right maybe maybe I don't know yeah type of is returning the atomic data type and factors not in a sorry not that's not the right word what's the right word for the so so uh, this. I think these functions, like I said, are looking at the class attribute to see what it is. Because you know, there's you this one. Atomic? What if you do it what does it say? Well, did, we could do that, but that was it, one underscore. Maybe the is underscore. So you're getting the R lang version and not base. So it's yeah. returning what you expect. If you do what do you want to check? Is atomic? Or is yeah, atomic, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, so this. Okay. I mean, atomic really kind of just means that it's um all one way, right? Um, did that kind did that answer your question, or you still have a question? Yeah, but even even if you mix up the the vector uh, and you put like red and one and and a, it's always atomic group. Yeah. No, so you can't. No, then it would be no. It would not be because if so you mix are. up data types, then it would be a list, not a not so a. If you, if you put a list, yeah, try. Try is atomic list as list as a, a factor. Uh, then then it says false. Huh. But then if you create a so, vector which is mixed up of you are just numbers, this? is this, that what you said? Yeah. Then it says yeah. false. Because atomic right. is a vector. If if you mix yes. up, you can just build up a, a vector as we did it before with uh, like let's say a number, a character, and an NA value. Let's let's try that. Okay. If, if if we just create a vector such as X, and we assign to a vector, not well, not a list, not a list. Uh, can you? I don't know. Can you do that? Yeah, just X. Okay. In... No, just assign the vector to. Uh, okay. A. Mm -hmm. then two as a number okay and then an a it assigned this to a bus okay but okay. we need to assign this yep. to a, a x assign this to a variable yeah to a variable so just okay okay now check whether it is a is a dummy with our lang or without our lang just the same okay. just the same Is 
picture. Hmm. Even if you don't use our land and you do it. Dot, because dot, I think dot. what happened is it got coerced, right? When you put these together like this, two is no longer a number. Two is now a character. Okay. okay. Because it got coerced. Because if you use the C, it has to all be the same data type. Okay. So it coerced the two to a character. Okay. But if you do it this way, right? Oh, sorry. Um, why well, can't hold on? There we go. So if you instead of using C, you use list, right? Now it doesn't coerce the two, right? So now your two is actually uh, numeric still, right? So now if we do this, um, it should say false. Yeah, it says false, but I, yeah, I, I understand that it coerce to be a character, but uh, that's a vector. And the other is a list. Yeah. So what what if if we do uh okay. What, uh how can we have a, a a vector of numbers? If we do C one, two, three, it's a vector of numbers. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. You wanna assign that to X? Yeah. Okay, they are all the same. Yeah. So now, it, yes, it should be atomic, right? Yeah. That's true. Because they're all numeric. So on what basis we convert to coerce to a character because there's more characters so, and numbers? If you turn any one of these values into a character instead of, a, you know, if you enclose it in quotes, now it's character, not numeric. Okay. Now it's going to co coerce everything to character. So now if you print X, everything's character. Okay. okay. And it should be false. Oh, no, no sorry. No, it's no. true. Be right, true, because they're all character. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. But then if you do a list, it's a list, it's not a, a, a vector. A list, well, yeah, a I guess a vector. list is a special type of vector. It's still a vector, but it's a, it's a special type. It's not an atomic vector. That's the difference. So the difference between them is atomic. They all have to be the same data type. Lists can have different data types within one list. That's the difference. But they're both vectors, types of vectors. Cool. Can I move on, or anybody have any other questions at this point? Good. Okay. So, um, and then again, you can see here if you uh, use the attributes function on your factor, you will see your levels and you'll see your class. So those are uh, the two defining attributes of a factor. Um, and factors can be ordered, which is really um, important for a lot of different types of data analyses, right? So if you say have high, medium, low, in general, you're going to want to see your, you know, probably low values first, then medium, then high, right? You don't want them in some random order. Um, so in that case, you use the ordered function to create your factor. You still give it your levels, but you put the levels in the order that they should be displayed, right? So then if you table it, if you look the values before making a factor, they're just in some like random order. Probably, I think they're, I was gonna say they're in the order that they are in the in the um, original vector, but actually they're not. It's just come, I, oh, I think it's, um. Sorry, it's alphabetical. It'll go alphabetically if you're not don't have an ordered factor. But then if you create an ordered factor with it, then they will go in the order that you put your levels in in uh, 
when you created your ordered factor, right? So second kind of, of um, S3 atomic vector that's created using class um, are dates. And dates are a double vector with the class date and no other attributes. Um, so you can uh, get the current date by using this date. Let's see, let's go, let's get everything down to here. Um, so um, if you check the type, it'll say double, but if you check uh, the attributes, you'll see the class is date. And actually in this case, if I had done, I think also class function on, what do we call it? Note state. Should also say date. Um, and the double component represents the number of days since January 1st, 1970. So if you um, create a date uh, for a, a date vector uh, for February 1st, 1970, and you unclass it, you will see 31, which is the number of days since January 1st, 1970. Right? Um, then there are date times. So date times are very similar to dates, but um, they also include the time. Um, there are two types, POSIX CT, POSIX LT, uh, which denote calendar time and local time. Um, the book focuses on calendar time because they say it's simplest. I don't really know much about the other one, so I don't know why it's more complicated, um, but also it's built on an uh, atomic double vector and most appropriate for use in a data frame. Um, they don't really go into more explanation of why those things are, but so I just took it for granted. <laughs> um, so to... Um, build a date time object. Um, you can use sysTime like this. Um, you give it a time zone. Um, then when you look at it, you'll see it has the date and time. Um, type is double, but you'll see class is actually interesting. POSIX CT and POSIX T. I'm not really sure why there's two in there. Um, again, I think if we did, uh, so let's see, I think I ran that, let's run this. I think if we did class on that one, again, we should see date time or something like, or POSIX CT probably. Yeah. So we see the same thing as you see here when you run the attributes under class. Um, what else? Oh, I just put this in so that you can see, like, because it's kind of, um, you know, a lot of the examples just use like this sys date or, you know, sys time or whatever. But just to see, this is the format that if you, you know, had uh, you know character data in this format that can be converted to a date time vector. Um, duration. So durations are also double vectors. Their class is diff time, and the attributes is uh, the units or the unit of duration, either weeks, hours, minutes, seconds, etc. Right. Um, so let's see, let's run these. Um, so again, if you just put in one with units minutes, it um, it's a one minute duration, time difference of one minute. Um, 
and it again type of will say double but the attributes will show class of diff time um, but where this is really useful which they didn't really show in the book is for doing mathematical operations on dates so if you take you know two other date objects and just subtract them you can get the difference uh between those two date or date time objects, right? Um, so that's super useful. Next, lists. All right. Um, sometimes called a generic vector or recursive vector. They, uh, again, the difference between those and atomic vectors is that lists can have different data types within the same list, whereas atomic vectors cannot. Um, so the example in the book called this simple list. Um, so you have logicals, integers, doubles, characters, and they all go into can go into one list using the list function, right? Um, now, when you construct it this way with using the C function inside to create different, you know, four vectors, it comes out as a list of four uh, and each item in the list is a vector of a certain type, right? Um, but I played around with it because I thought that was a kind of actually slightly more complicated simple list <laughs> and an even simpler list. Um, let's see, let me I skip down. Uh, you could, you know, you don't really need to put them within the C functions inside. You can just type them in in any order or whatever. But what happens, I guess I do, it's easier to see this, I think, if I run it on this side. So let me show you. So here's your simple list. And so in order to um, like access the parts, so this gets a little bit into the next chapter, so I won't go into to it too much because this is about subsetting, but You'll see if you do simple list one, you get the entire logical vector. This is on the first example, right? And then if you do simple list two, you get the entire numeric vector, et cetera, right? And then if you just want one element from within these, you have to use this sort of double uh, brackets, like, and then select. So to select the list item and then the number of the item within that list item, right? So it's like double indexing. I don't know what you call it really, but um, if you want just one item. But then if you do the simpler list this way, where everything is just within the list function without the C functions, then when you access one, five, nine, eleven, you know, any item in the list, you're just getting the one item. So everything is is, let's see, I wanna show something else. So if you look at, see your simple list is a list of four, whereas your simpler list without the C functions is a list of 13. Every item is separate in the list. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, and then we have nested lists. Um, so you can put a, a list within a list within a list within a list. Um, so that's good for like hierarchical data. Um, you can combine lists. So, let's see. Um, so you'll see the difference here between list combination one, list combination two. So in the first one, you have two lists inside of another list, and you'll see it retains that hierarchical structure here. So you still see your two lists inside of a, a main list, right? Whereas if you put two lists inside of the C function, it just uh, like con combines and concatenates them into one longer list of four, right? So it doesn't retain the hierarchical structure this way. Um, and I actually tested because I was curious if this would work if they were different data types because the example was all numeric and it still works even with different data types. It'll just create them, uh, it'll just create one 
list without the hierarchical structure. Okay, so again, for testing, you have the is.list function or the rlang is list. Um, the benefit of rlang is that it can check for the number of elements. So you can actually check, like, does it have four elements? Um, um, sorry, I thought there was something else. I guess that's it. Um, And again, if you have something and you want to force it to make to um, force it to be a list, you can wrap it in as dot list. All right, next very short one: matrices and arrays. So this isn't used much, but just to know that it's possible, um, the dimension attribute can be added. Uh, to create list matrices or list arrays. So you can take a list object and then add the dimensions to it and turn it into a matrix or array that way. Beta frames and tables, oh my God. We're almost out of time, aren't we? <laughs> Sorry guys, this, there's, this was a long chapter. Um, so I'll try to be very quick. Uh, data frames and tibbles. So um, data frame is a named list of vectors. Um, so each column in the data frame is a vector. All the vectors have to be the same length. Um, they have column names, kind of uh, row names, and they have the class data frame. Um, so you can create your columns. Uh, Give and this gives them your column a name as you're creating the data frame inside the data dot frame function. Um, you can see the column names when you inspect it. It has a type of list, um, but class of data frame. Uh, if you use row names, you can see row names, column names for column names. Names is the same as column names. Um, number of rows, number of columns, and length is the same as number of columns. Um, now, tibbles are similar, but were created to try to relieve some of the frustrations and pain points that um, are created by data frames, since uh, basically when they were uh, originally creating them, you know, things changed afterwards and, and created some problems that they were trying to fix by creating tibbles, right? So uh, tibbles are data frames that they call lazy and surly. So they do less and they complain more. Um, they do not coerce strings, although the recent versions uh, of R don't coerce strings either. So you don't need the strings as factors anymore. Um, what else? Uh, they transform non-syntactic names, so they'll fix the names, uh, and they uh, recycle vectors of length greater than one. Uh, oh, they, sorry, they do not, sorry, do not transform non-syntactic names, and they recycle, do not recycle vectors of length greater than one. Um, so they'll throw errors, basically. Um, so here you can see in the data frame, it makes it a syntactic name. And for a tibble, it does not. Um, and here you'll get an error if you try to create a tibble using vectors of different lengths. Unless this was just a length one, then it would just put that same value in every, every place. Um, Let's see. Do we want? Do we want to? Does do we want to finish this, or do people have to go and we want to finish it next time, or just move? Because I'm yeah. hoping next the next chapter isn't going to be this long. Hopefully, I don't know. <laughs> we can just keep uh, going for what we this chapter next next week. So okay. So yeah, we'll just keep because I'm doing next week too. So hopefully we can just finish this up real quick and then move on. Right. Okay. Okay, great. Sorry, everybody. I hope that wasn't too- No, wasn't thank you. 
there was Thank a you for lot, doing this. A lot to cover, so I hope that wasn't super boring to just yeah. listen to no, talk a little time. Thank you very much. All right. Okay, so I'll see you next week. See y'all. Thank you. All right, bye. Bye.